I want to share with you today another orthodox corruption of scripture from Dr. Ehrman's book from the early 90s. So the textual facts regarding 1 John 5.20, in most translation, it reads, we know that God's Son has come and has given us understanding to know the one who is true. We are in the one who is true by being in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Now, a fair reading of this verse alone, without any context, is clearly showing us two individuals, two uh, selves here. One designated God and Jesus as the Son of God, which is obviously a truth throughout the New Testament. But the word this in John must sometimes be understood in context. For example, in the letters of John, in those verses, if we take the closest antecedent, Christ would be Antichrist, if you read it that way. And unfortunately, this is how many are reading 1 John 5.20. They believe that the writer here, when he uses the antecedent, this is the true God, that he's applying it to the person he just spoke about, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Lastly, if that were true, though, this would flat out contradict what Jesus himself confesses in John 7, 3, 17, 3, that the Father is the only one who is true God. So if here we're taking the antecedent, this is the true God as referring to Jesus, that would make two who are true God. So how is that not flat out contradicting what Jesus himself confesses in John chapter 17. Added to this is an interesting history to the text. So in this book, Letters and Homilies for Hellenized Christians, Ben Witherington, famous evangelical, shows us that in the phrase, the first phrase, the first part of the verse, but we know that the Son of God has come, he has an interesting footnote. Once again, some later scribes writing in Latin, impatient with our author's telegraphic way of putting things, add, quote, and was clothed with flesh for our sake and suffered and arose from the dead, he adopted us. And then it says to see the famous uh, textual commentary by Bruce Metzger. Now, as an evangelical, the author here, Ben Witherington, obviously believes Jesus is God in the absolute sense, but he nonetheless notes the clear corruption here by some of the early scribes when they add the incarnation language to the Son of God. In another book, a commentary on the letters of John, we have this. To the words he is come, several Vulgate manuscripts and Latin fathers add, and put on flesh for our sake, and suffered, and rose from the dead, he took us up. This is further evidence of the theologizing tradition of the transmission of 1 John in the West, of which the Johannine comma is a particular instance. So this comment by the author is very interesting because he's aligning this corruption by the Latin, some Latin fathers of 1 John 5.20 with the infamous 1 John 5.7, known as the Johannine comma, which Dr. Ehrman and others have said it's really the only explicit reference to the doctrine of the Trinity. But of course, for around four, four to 500 years, according to Dr. Daniel Wallace, the Johannine comma has been known to be a flat out corruption. 
So we see here early heresies combined. Now we had patripatianism, which the previous quote alludes to when it says that the uh, God that took flesh suffered. Patripatianism, if you look it up, was in one of the early heresies where some people believe that God the Father, because that's the only God there is, took on flesh, suffered, and died. And now this either led to the incarnation of the Orthodox Catholic Protestant tradition, or vice versa, when they tried and combined those two clear errors. So Ehrman continues in his book here, under the heading, Christ has divined the exchange of predicates. One of the ways that proto-Orthodox Christians, by that he means the early Trinitarians, of the second and third centuries expressed their understanding of Christ, involved an exchange of predicates in which the attributes and activities of God were predicated of Christ, or conversely, the characteristics and actions of Christ were predicated of God. Interchanges of this sort occur commonly in such writers as Ignatius, Melito, and Tertullian, who speak of the, quote, blood of God, or the, quote, passion of God, or even of God being crucified, or, quote, murdered. <laughs> 